Everything alternative, Radio Felicia and the Falcon. Sup, dudes? It's Dom Tangretti. And man, I got a special invite for you guys today. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you guys to David Langdowitz, founder of the Phenomenon, the Brooklyners. How you doing, David? Hey, thank you. Thank you for having me. How are you um, doing, Dominic? Good? Pretty good. Pretty good. Right. We got some good vibes here today. You know, right off the bat, we're going to talk about those washboard skills. Got to do it. I mean, uh, some of my listeners might not know what a wasp word is, so you mind just elaborating on that real quick? Oh, um, it's the, I have my grandma's kitchen stuff with me, so she's always a little with me with her fungi pot because she's from the abs. And uh, her cheese grater, my grandpa's travel, is the family business, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, all that on the washboard with thimbles. And then you just play like you would play a drum set, you know. Yeah, yeah. My favorite part is that cheese grater I see on the top. It's like like you play with yeah. like a cymbal, right? Yeah, yeah. It is like yeah, a it's... symbol of the travel, so it's kind of a hi hat. Mm-hmm. A dish pan like sounds a little bit like a a snare that you would play with brushes. Mm-hmm. Um, and the the fondue part is more like a like a cowbell kind of thing, kind of sound. Yeah, it's such a unique instrument itself. I mean, when I, when I see you play the, the instruments, like I saw a couple of uh, YouTube videos on it. And uh-huh. Like, how how did you come across like that like certain technique that you have when you play? It's like so. Uh, it's it's like so like I, I've never heard anything like it. You know? <laughs> all right, that's good. That's good to hear. Um, well, lack of room in the car. Really, that's how it started. Um, for a tour in the south of France, where I'm from. And um, so frustrated with uh, just a washboard, just a board. Um, so I just went down, you know, make myself a coffee and starting to bang on things that was drying out around. And uh, that was yeah. it. That was the start of it. And that yeah, was like just testing out these sounds. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and try to, you know, find some different sound than just the rickety sound of the of just the board, you know. Yeah, yeah. And I read a little on your website about like your travels in like 2003. It said like you went to like Africa, Asia, Central America. Like, how did those like experiences like play into like how you write your music and how you perform? All the music brought me on all those places, made me meet most people that I met in my life. So it's a big, um, yeah, it's it's a uh, it's a big uh, it's a big thing into my life. It's. It really brought me everywhere and a lot of touring, like 20 years or so of touring, usually brings you uh, in a lot of different places, wonderful places, you know, meet tons of people that are so amazing. So I'm grateful for all those travels and, you know, and again, all, you know, grateful to music because that's that's the one thing that brought me all over the place. Yeah, that's and, really cool. Especially in America for now 20 years. Yeah, and... Um, like I had also read on that website, like I, I don't know if I read this like Les Paul. Do you play with Les Paul? His last That's show. The jam with him and his last show. That's it was crazy. His last show. Um unfortunately I wanted to come back two weeks later because I had a gig in uh, on Mondays for years in Brooklyn and one day I just stubbed it out because uh, my friend Steve Addison Chapman stick player wanted to want me to meet uh, Les Paul and I, I was every time pushing it saying I have my little gig you know on Mondays but one day I thought it was too it was an experience that I'm gonna miss out on and uh, I did sub it out and went there and it happened to be his last show so mm-hmm. unfortunately there was no more um and yeah that was very that was very sad after that but what a night yeah he was such a storyteller yeah. Yeah, great cool. musician <laughs> yeah yeah i'm sure it was an honor to play with him too and just get the opportunity to jam with him you know very humble very funny um yeah those are the the things i remember from this boat forever for sure and i saw that that kind of like led to um like you had gotten like a deal with with Iridium, I think. I don't know so if I'm pronouncing that right. Yeah, the Iridium saw me a, a few times. Uh, beside that, because we played, I played a lot of gypsy jazz at the time, and so, 
um, on a project, I went back there again, and uh, and it was like, oh, I haven't seen you yeah. for a while. Uh, how about that was, you? That was with the Hot Clubbers, right? With the Hot Clubbers. Uh, no, yeah, that, that wasn't that, the... That new project was a project, uh, but it was a different album, but uh, but then they wanted to see some gypsy jazz, so I brought in the, the Hot Clubbers, and with guests, I would invite, because I was playing a lot of... Uh, gypsy jazz so all the french people or the gypsy jazz players from all over when they come to town we gotta play and uh and i would bring them on sunday night i had a little carte blanche uh, mm -hmm. night on sunday night and gypsy jazz carte blanche so we did record an old album there and uh that was a blast it's on mm -hmm. every but you know like platform where you can check it out wherever you want for free or not uh but uh it was a great experience yeah that's really cool i i gave the like live album that you have up i have a spotify so i looked it up on there i gave it a All really right, long yeah. lesson i was listening while i was doing my homework the other day it sounded really good right. nice right, long jams you. i like i like the solos in there <laughs> pretty nice right. thank really you you play, you, you play percussion um I, I play piano and guitar a little bit, more of a hobby thing. I don't have like a band or anything. I wish I did. Okay. Ha haven't okay. met the right people yet, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's all about, it. you know, meeting people. It's all yeah, about, yeah. life is all about that. It's the people you meet, really. That's yeah, your hopefully. life. Hopefully. I, I, I've met one dude recently that, that plays piano on campus. Uh, I've been jamming with him a little bit. There's a piano in this place called The Castle on campus that I jam nice. out. Yeah, there you go. That's the band forming, you know? Yeah, yeah, just that's in the in, in process. Keep yeah. it going. <laughs> um, and we talked all about that other stuff, but now we talk about the Brooklyners like themselves. Like you're the main event on uh on the Rutherford show coming up at the Williams Center, right? It's and like day, yeah, be before we start talking about all of that, like I love the that on your website it said spreading the message of peace, love, justice for all, like. Mm -hmm. That's the vibe that it brings, and I love that. That that's what's always drawn me to reggae, the fans and the atmosphere at the shows. It's just so cool. And like, I wanted to know, like, like um, I'm a big festival goer myself, and I saw the Atlantic Antics and Beat Festival listed. I wanted to know, like, how the atmosphere there differs from the atmosphere at like a regular venue, from like the performer. Uh, festivals are festivals are always a bunch of fun and a very special way of playing music because you meet all your peers or all your all the same people all over the place and uh, and you play for big audience that uh, that n not necessarily came to see you they just came to a festival so it's different in that level um because you might pick some interest in people who wouldn't have come to a show uh mm -hmm. and buy a ticket so it makes it very special and all the buzz, you know, around a festival is always, yeah, yeah it's yeah. always, I love festivals. Yeah, there's awesome. lots of people. That's, that's nah, my yeah, kind of thing. It's so good. It's <laughs> so good. And, and like, people like try their best to welcome you and to make that experience also something uh, memorable for you. So as an artist, festival is very, it's a special place in my heart. All of those festivals, outdoor, indoor, doesn't matter. In Ireland, in India in america it's just uh always fun you know and i know a lot of the music in the brooklyners is like like a hybrid of that like french classic sound with like jamaican roots like like i like that background use of it like i, I listen to like crossroads and i i can't pronounce the other one that you said me um oh, what's it called? The valley, that's so, yeah, no, yeah that's really good the that's really yeah. good man. So I yeah I I um I used to have to play as a drummer young drummer I had to work a lot on the on the three four form uh instead of the four four that we hear every day and we can yeah yeah four, four whatever I was day. in France <laughs> at the time but it was the same in America you have that that snare on two and four um and but my mentor at the time was like you need to to work on your waltzes and your three four because you're gonna find yeah, a lot of more of that like swing kind of feel right yeah and so started to play a lot of waltzes which i didn't especially like at the time 
but now uh, get, I'm getting older and uh, it's been now 20 years I've been away from France. I found myself like loving more and more all those like amazing sound, songs. Like at that time, those like that specific song was written like in the 50s. And uh, what I like about that French 50s, 40s, 50s was is that it would take three geniuses to write a song, like a composer, uh, an amazing composer that you would go and then they would see a poet uh, for to write the lyrics. And then they would bring all of that to an interpreter that's Edith Piaf or some amazing character. And uh, so it would literally like take three geniuses to make a song a hit and um, chord progression wise, melody wise, it's just unbelievable. And to have that amazing uh, rhythm section that I'm lucky to have in the Brooklyners, it's like, it's unbelievable. Abda and Kika on bass and drum are very unique. Mm -hmm. And so we started to play those waltzes, but in reggae. Uh, and it's like, it's a poem just expressed on a, on a reggae beat uh, with those chord progression is just a blast and it's so fun we played it again last night all those um, Edith Piaf we play some Aznavour Jacques Brel Georges Brassens we play all of those mm -hmm. old singers but in a, in a reggae flavor like roots reggae Jamaican that's flavor. cool that's cool yeah um, what's it called did, did you want to like um like list the other members of the band? I I know I only got you here, but there's plenty of you guys. In the I band. asked them last night, but they're not really like they um they 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 don't really their phone to get them on the phone already. Uh, uh, just talk yes. to them. It's a, you have to wait that you know they look at the phone and uh well I didn't feel they really were too much into downloading the do this stuff is to say oh i don't have yeah to do yeah that. <laughs> uh, you I know, know this year like can be a little tricky <laughs> and uh yeah it's not it's not their thing sorry about that mm -hmm. i asked no, you you're guys good, you're good. yeah <laughs> i know yeah, i'm, I'm excited to see the show i know i'm going bringing, saturday yeah they'll be there saturday and bring, my friend too it's it's his first it's his first reggae show so oh, my wow. friend it's, mike <laughs> He's on for a treat with that uh, amazing uh, guest we have with us on Saturday, Andy Bassford, who's like a, a reggae legend. Mm, uh, yeah, and yeah, he's a legend. His whole discography is crazy, man. I was looking it's at it. Like, <laughs> it goes from, like, from like, the seventies until now, like and super humble with that. You'll 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 see mm. Saturday. He's unbelievable, but when he when he start touching that guitar, man, he's just like you don't want him to stop. And um, yeah, he's like three times Grammys, a platinum album with Rihanna. He's just sting all the time. Mm -hmm. when he's, and we got lucky yeah, because the guy so loved crazy, so much. Man. I guess that that kind of what I was just talking about, those songs that are really elaborated, um, coming from the 50s and 40s, from some geniuses. Um, and uh, I think he, he enjoys playing that. So even if I call him for a little bar or something, if he can do it, he comes. If he's not playing with Sting or Rihanna, or who God knows, yeah. who knows who, um, you know, he, yeah, real humble. he's just, it's super humble and very, uh, very pleasant. You, you'll see. And man, as soon as he, he gets some notes out of his guitar that I didn't know existed. Uh, mm. So that's, that's the man. And from early on, he played with all the big ones in reggae, especially in reggae, everywhere we go, um, people, ev every generation know about Andy Bassford, that white American dude that was in Jamaica in the in the 80s when he was telling me one time that uh, a lot of the good players in Jamaica were already touring, whether it was with Bob, with Dennis Brown, with uh, Gregory Isaacs or Toots in the Metal, you name it. Uh, but he was the one guy that was on the island and humbly as he is like, oh, is it because it's, they were touring. So I was the only one kind of left on the island. So I got to record and be the, the, the studio guy for all those artists. But no, he just had an amazing talent. And those producers in Jamaica, they have really good ears. And uh, and they, they just felt that he had something very special. And he ended up with a. With the band, uh, the Dennis Brown, um, with the people 
for years until you know his death and then and then he went on with the toots and the medals for like 20 something years so and in between he played with really everybody and now he's a lot with shaggy monty alexander um shaggy's team yeah i saw a lot of shaggy on that yeah. list <laughs> yeah they got the grammy like if it's not last year then the year before um i was thinking shaggy together like releasing an album so he's that mm. kind of guy that we're gonna have with us saturday it's just yeah that he's... it's worth the trip a lot of collaborations a lot of experience <laughs> right <laughs> uh -huh. and he has the story of course that go we're not gonna get into that saturday uh on stage mm. but uh man what a pleasure to be spend the night with him it's just uh it's not just when he plays the guitar it's just he's I've been asking him for years now to, and I'm not the only one. It's like, please write a book, yeah. write a book with all those tour stories and all those amazing anecdotes. Yeah, that'd be great. That'd be a great read. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait. He promised it. Let's see. We'll see. I ask him again Saturday. Every time I see him, I ask him, <laughs> when is the book coming? And, yeah, when's the book coming? Um, let me plug you guys in real quick for all my viewers out there. We got what? March. March 23rd, Saturday, that's going to be 7.30 to 11. It's like 11, 11, 11.30. Doors open at 6, and you got the opener CC Roots in there, right? And then straight to the Brooklyners with you, and like we were just saying about Andy Basford, and that's pretty much it here. Um, Rocket T, Rocket T is going to be there. Yeah. Rocket T has been on the scene for a long time, and he's just like coming from... Uh, He's on his way from from California, uh, passing through New York City, and he's like, "Yeah, man, I come, I come uh -huh. and join the fun." So he'll be there. Um, so yeah, let's. Uh, it's gonna be a really cool night. No, no, you know, no worries about that. I, I'm looking forward to it. That's good. Cool. And then, as we always at Radio Felician, we're the Falcons here, so I always end everything by "Peace out, Falcons." You want to do the honors there? Peace out, fucking Falcons. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> one love, you know. One and, love. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for spreading the the word and the love and the you know the peaceful message, uh, because it started long ago, but it's still it's still nowadays more right than on. ever. Gotta keep it, it alive, you know? man. <laughs> so we're gonna talk about peace, but uh, about also justice, about a lot of things, because reggae addresses all of this. So, all right. always in a good vibe, though. All right. Thank you for all talking, right. man. All right, man. You have a good one. I'll see you Saturday. You too. And all of y'all. All right. Uh, one love. Right.